This week has been a surprisingly busy news week for hardware. Normally towards the end of the year, generally we expect it to calm down a little bit, especially this year since it's been non-stop since May around Computex time, but it's still going. This week for news, we've got some interesting updates on the RX 460, suddenly becoming a bit more relevant with some unlocking via BIOS functionality, of course, unofficial. And uh, there's AMD Ryzen, which we covered in another video, some interesting SSDs from Corsair and more. But before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by MSI and their new Core Frozer L CPU cooler, which you can see in our new case testing bench. We've been using that lately for the new case reviews, and you've probably seen it at this point. But let's get straight into it. So first off, the most interesting item, at least that I think, is the RX 460 unlocking. This was found by Der Bauer, one of the overclockers. He's uh, sort of peers with Buildzoid. You're mostly all familiar with Buildzoid at this point from actually hardcore overclocking. Der Bauer is uh, one of his counterparts. He's an overclocker. He's found that you can unlock the RX 460s from the native 896 cores to a 1024 core count. And that of course includes an increase in TMUs because you're probably unlocking a full uh, block basically on the GPU. So that goes from 56 TMUs to 64. Pretty good gain in terms of both core count and TMUs, and that actually will reflect in performance. I'm not going to talk about how much just yet, because I actually want to test it myself, uh, but we will be doing a guide this weekend, hopefully, on how to unlock an RX 460. It currently only works for, as far as we're aware, the Sapphire Nitro 4GB card and Asus Strix 4GB card. It may work for other uh, devices, but as far as we know right now, the BIOS unlocks the mods, which you can apply just through normal flashing tools are only available for those two devices in particular, but we'll have a guide on how to do that and then some benchmark performance with preliminary information on the gains. Uh, do note one thing here, the AMD Relive drivers do impact some of the unlocks that have been applied and custom BIOS installations elsewhere. So it might impact these. It's really hard to say now if AMD is going to be validating BIOS going forward with their drivers, that could pose a problem for things like this, but ooh, it's too soon to tell right now. Uh, very quickly, I will mention that AMD Ryzen, the Zen architecture update was streamed uh, this week. We have a separate video on it. If you wanna learn more about it, go there. And that is the eight core, 16 thread CPU, 3.4 gigahertz. They put it against an i7-6900K Broadwell E CPU from Intel and had mostly parity in terms of performance. Uh, so that is covered in our other video, including some caching discussion. Next topic. This one is from a company that, honestly, I'd never heard of until I checked my email just before this video. A uh, company called Zadak 511 is producing a new kit of just more RGB stuff. So it's DDR4 RGB memory, and then the part that I thought was interesting enough to at least show was the RGB SSD, and it's basically got sort of one zone, I think, with uh, an isolating bar down the middle, lights up on either side of it, and is controllable via software for both the DRAM and the SSD. So you can actually control the colors through software. It doesn't require extra cables. A few interesting things here. First of all, Zadek 511, of course, instantly I was like, who the heck are they? Is this some fly-by-night company? Went and looked it up uh, using a quick who is. Their domain was registered in December of 2015. They're pretty new about a year old at this point, and it is owned by Apacer, which is actually a known company in memory, uh, and is a Taiwanese company. So they're based in Taiwan, they're owned by Apacer, and they were created about a year ago. It's focused on modding. Now with that said, the new devices are called the Shield. I've reached out and asked for price, availability, what controller was used, what NAND was used, all of these things, because they didn't tell us anything about it other than the fact that they have LEDs. <laughs> which I suppose is all you need to know these days. Uh, so I don't have that information just yet, but worth pointing them out. The memory we know clocks at 2400 megahertz at the low end. They go up to 3000 megahertz kits sold in capacities up to 64 gigabytes. DDR4, not too exciting there. SSD I know nothing about because they didn't tell us anything. Uh, and then we know that the one, well, that's not true. There's one interesting thing about the SSD that's worth noting. And that is, it is a dual interface SSD now. That's not, you can use them jointly and get expanded throughput or anything crazy like that, which would be interesting. But uh, it's just, you basically get a USB type C connector on it. So a 3.1 type C, 
and then there's also the standard SATA 3 connector. Now in theory, with USB 3.1 Type-C, you get a bit more throughput than on SATA 3, which is kind of a dying slash needs to die interface for SSDs, but it depends on the controller and the NAND how much of that extra bandwidth will actually be utilized. So that's from Zadak. I I'm not going to recommend necessarily pre-ordering that stuff, but we might look at it, and if we do, then we can figure out then if it's worth it. Uh, it does remind me a bit of a Vexor, though. Also in SSD news, you may have seen on our website this week that one of our writers, Eric Hamilton, covered the SSD price increases that are expected. So uh, I very briefly mentioned this in an Ask GN video, and a couple of folks commented things like, doesn't affect me because I just bought this SSD for this great price and obviously SSD prices are fine. That's not really what's going on here. What's going on is somewhere in the range of 2017 to 2018, you should expect an increase in both SSD prices and hard drive prices, at least at the higher end. And that's because of two things. On the SSD side, the, fab the manufacturing is increasing so much that obviously there's a supply shortage or can't keep up with demand and most of that's going to mobile. And then on the hard drive side, there's just a lot of the factories are spinning down because hard drives sort of are spinning down, especially in consumer. Uh, that's not the main point of bringing this topic up though. The main point of bringing up the SSD prices because we already covered this in the article if you're curious to learn more about that and why it's going on. Main reason is because Corsair's also got a new SSD, so I guess they're gonna have fierce competition from Zadak 511. I uh, really need to watch their backs there. Corsair's SSD is a revival of the 4 Series. You may remember their 4 Series from years ago. Corsair sort of abandoned that market, which being a memory manufacturer was an interesting move, to say the least. But it seems like they're trying to come back. So they're coming back, reviving the 4 Series with the MP500 M.2 SSD, and that is an NVMe drive that lives on four PCIe lanes. Uh, so that would put it, theoretically, with its Fizon controller, I don't know what the NAND is right now, but we know it's a Fizon E7 controller, that would theoretically put it in competition about where the Samsung 960 EVO is right now. And the advertised specifications is all I can go off of, we haven't tested it, and so, I, you know, grain of salt and all of that. But the advertised specifications they've given us are three gigabytes per second sequential read, 2.4 gigabytes per second sequential write, and then the random transactions are rated for about 250,000 4K read and about 210,000 4K write IOPS. So that's what we have for the Corsair drive right now, the MP500, and that will be using the Fizon PS5000 E7 controller, NAND undeclared. I'm going to be reaching out to them about that though. A couple other things, it notes the sort of smart suite of technology, so that's things like Smart Flush and uh, EEC and Refresh and all these features alongside the existing Fizon controller garbage collection where leveling and write amplification factor features, which of course are the same on all drives, but with probably some tuning on Corsair side, at least uh, something to set them apart. That's how these things work. So that, I don't have a have any more information on it, but that's the, the basics for right now. Final news item, this one's kind of on the industry side. It's a bit interesting though. So TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, is expanding its operations to include a new nearly $16 billion fabrication facility. Uh, so it's a $15.7 billion plant. They already have outfits in a couple places in Taiwan, in China, and now they're adding this one. And this will expand to support five nanometer and three nanometer production. A couple things here. Uh, first item of note, the way that TSMC defines their process and their nodes doesn't necessarily, well, is not the same as the way Intel defines theirs, for example. So five and three nanometer may mean different things depending on which manufacturer you talk to. Uh, with this one, I don't know if they're going to EUV lithography or not, it might not be, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll really have to wait and find out more technical information on that because there's not been a lot revealed just yet. But five nanometer, three nanometer production support for the new $16 billion facility. They are currently researching at least lightly two nanometer process. And then there's a seven nanometer chip, as I understand it now, that actually exists and is being experimented on at TSMC. So that's kind of news on the a production front. If you're not familiar with TSMC, they're probably most known by our viewers for their Pascal 16 nanometer FinFET. 
process and they also worked on the Snapdragon 10 nanometer CPUs and the iPhone 7, whatever they use, A10, I think, processor is what the iPhone 7 uses. Uh, so TSMC, targeting production by 2020 to include 5 nanometer and 3 nanometer in their fabrication manufacturing, 7 nanometer under experimentation, and 10 nanometer process should be profitable by end of year 2017. So that's all we have for you for this week for the hardware news. So always, links in the description below for more information, gamersnexus.net if you want to follow this stuff as it's published, and Patreon link the post video to help us out directly. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.